Hey, Andy here. From time to time, we get asked a lot of questions about applications that hook into Kubernetes, VDI being one of them. Recently, I found out a friend of mine is doing a lot with sales over at a company called Coder. And I looked at them years ago. In fact, I used to use their VS Code server as part of my workshop environment uh, three, four, two, three, four years ago and wanted to take another look at it, especially because my friend going over there and really kind of fell in love with it. It is incredibly crisp, incredibly clean. Uh, so I wanted to show how to install it, what it is, what it can really be used for. But I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about uh, life updates. So on Monday, I was laid off from Rancher Government. Not a big deal. I've been there three years. It was the right time for me to leave. Uh, but what that really means is I've got a little bit of time now to create a bunch of videos, coder being one of them. I have a few others coming up that I want to kind of, uh, investigate and play with. So no sweat off my back, right? No worries. Let's actually dig into this. So what I've got right here, of course, I'm running it on harvester. I've got a VM, eight, eight cores, 16 gigs of Ram. And I've got my simple node right here. What I've done, and I'll put this in the show notes, but, uh, and I'm, had plenty of videos on how to deploy Kubernetes. Uh, but what I did is I just deployed RKE2 and we can see kubectl get uh, node dash o wide for fun. We can see that I have a single node cluster running, uh, running uh, RKE2 130.5, running on Rocky 9.4. Rocky is kind of my go-to operating system just because a lot of my customers use it. Former customers, future customers, eh, to be determined. A lot of people I know use it, and so it's just been my go-to, RPM, all the things, yay, simple, right? What we're going to do is, let me pull up my notes, Whoop, nope, that's not it. Uh, there we go, there's my notes, and we can go to my notes right here on it. So I've got a bunch of commands here, I'm going to put this in the, the show notes, obviously. Uh, I should have put it on a gist first, but oh well. So nice thing about Coder is it's all Helm installed uh, from an architectural standpoint of view. Let me show you what it looks like. From an architectural standpoint of view, it is relatively simple. <clears throat> I'll clip that out for you. Uh, relatively simple in terms of the architecture, right? So it literally, it runs on Kubernetes, great. You can add in SSO, OAuth kind of capabilities. You can then run it uh, on, yeah, like I said, Kubernetes. It's a simple pod for the control plane. It is a database and then any developer workspaces as well. And as you can see, tail scale, direct connect, there's a lot of different use case out of it. It's really, really slick. Um, within 10 minutes of deploying, it was like, ooh, I get it. Uh, similar to like tail scale and that kind of like, oh my God, this is awesome. Okay, so first things first, uh, we can follow the install docs. <clears throat> and again, I will link this, um, but uh, this is really kind of meant to be as the TLDR, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the namespace itself. So here's my cluster and let me do, let me get NS and you can see that I don't have, I just have Longhorn for persistent storage. Uh, the Postgres database does require it, which is, you know, not a big deal. Longhorn's free, Longhorn's easy. If you've got any other storage layer, great, go for it. So let's go ahead and create the namespace and then we're going to do a Helm repo add. So I've already got Helm installed. Let's go ahead and install Helm. And this is just the Bitnami charts for Postgres. Actually, it looks like it's all of the Bitnami charts. And then we're going to go ahead and do it. Uh, install it with Helm install. In fact, here we go. I'm going to change this. Up. I like upgrade-i. And what it's going to do is it's going to... Actually, I don't even need to create the namespace. I could do dash dash create namespace in here to work. Maybe I'll clean it up for you. But... We're gonna create the namespace. We're gonna give it a username coder, a password coder. This is not gonna be exposed externally. It's just internal use. So I'll go ahead and do a Helm install for that. Helm, sorry, Helm upgrade dash I. And what we'll see in a second, kube. Actually do this, control R and S. We can see now the coder namespace is there and it's actually installing in there. So kube get uh, coder and we can see the Postgres uh, pod is con uh, getting created <clears throat> and just for giggles we can look at the PVC so we can see that Longhorn has already created the the PVC has been created it's attached storage all the good things okay 
Next, we need to create a secret that just, and this is a pretty canned uh, string for the coder control plane to talk to Postgres. There is some instructions if you want to use other databases. Just stick with Postgres. It just works, right? So we create the secret. Next thing we're going to do is add the coder Helm repo. It's a pretty straightforward paradigm. If you've watched any of my videos, this is pretty much the same thing that uh, we do recommend that I do kind of walk through. Okay, for this one, we're going to modify. So I don't know if we remember. Uh, let's do node. So our external IP is our same as our internal was 101. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use SSLIP, but I'm going to change. Let me change all occurrences. Got to love VS Code locally. Okay, so what we're doing is we're creating the values. This is this is what tripped me up and took me a few minutes. The coder access URL, that's the front door. The ingress is also the front door. Those two have to match. Just forget everything else. Those two have to match. And then obviously you can see here that the Postgres connection URL comes from the secret coder DB URL. That's the one we created. So you can see how these two are kind of attaching together. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and create that values file. And we can see we now have that values file right there. That's exactly what we want. It's got the right IP. So now let's just check where our pod is. PVC pod. Okay, Postgres is up and running. Let's go ahead and do a Helm upgrade I for coder using those values. And again, all, all it's really doing is setting where the front door is and that's literally it. So we can do, yep, it's sort of deployed and we can, so now we can see it's up and running. We can then check ingress and there is our IP. Once it goes full ready, we'll get the, the actual internal IP address. <clears throat> I apologize. I just went for a bike ride and it was delightful. So we're going to do is we're going to go to that IP and there we go. We've got coder already up and running. Pretty easy, right? So for the username, I haven't looked in the automation yet. And I'm sure there's a way, but for username, it wants to use a uh, username. So let's call this, say I'll go use mine, Clemenko, full name, Andy Clemenko, email, Clemenko, at Gmail, password, capital P-A-2-2-W-R-D, one, two, three. I, I, when playing with this earlier, it wants a longer, more secure password. So we'll add that. Let's go ahead and hit create account. I'm going to hit never. So there we go. Now we're in. Okay, we've got coder deployed. We can go back here. We can get pod. We can see everything's running. Okay, there's still another set of steps. So coder re relies on what's called workspaces. In order to create a workspace, you have to use a template. You have to add the template. Now, I have found a, a Sharky mark that has a significant number of templates. What's cool about Coder is all the templates are based on Terraform. So if you know Terraform, easy peasy. But what's kind of cool here is they've got pod with VNC. They've got pod with RStudio. So this is all designed to run on Kubernetes. And one of the interesting ones, and this is where it starts to blur the lines of what Coder can do, is pod with Chasm. And what this is really cool is it actually includes the web-based terminal and actually a GUI desktop starting to blur the lines with VDI. In fact, Coder calls it CDE, Cloud Development Environment, not an ID, not an individual, a cloud one, really starts to blur the lines. And so for me, that's where it starts to get really interesting from pen test, data isolation, network isolation, uh, consistent coding environments, things like that. So what we're gonna do is, right, we gotta go back here, we gotta create a template. The nice thing is we're running on Kubernetes. Let's just use Kubernetes. But you can see that there's templates for Docker, EC2, GCE. Um, there are a whole bunch of, let's view all the other starters. You can talk to DigitalOcean, you talk to cloud providers to, to create resources, Nomad, straight up Kube. We're going to use straight up Kube because, right, single node, not a big deal. I am not going to change anything. Now, there was a bug. Yep. So this is a weird one. I haven't figured, I got to open a ticket. But it basically says missing variables. So if you go back here and go fill variables, you'll notice it says use kube config, leave it false, and the var namespace. This namespace has to match what you had already deployed. So in this case, for us, it's coder. We're going to put it in the same namespace. And the reason being is it uses a service account that automatically gets created by the Helm chart. 
That's the, so basically what's happening, we've got Coda running in a namespace, talking back through the Kube API to the same cluster to deploy workspaces. If you were doing it like Spoken Hub, then you've got to potentially pass in the Kube config. And I played with that and it does work. But I like doing it this just for at least demonstrational testing. And then you can start, uh, you can reach out to my friends over there and they'll tell you how to architect it for, you know, thousands of users. Okay, let's go ahead and do a retry. So what it's basically doing right now is it's installing the template and boom, we have it. Here's the other cool thing, right? Now I can actually see all the variables for the Terraform. I can edit it. Notice there's an edit button. So it literally has kind of like a uh, version control built into Coder. Really cool. And by the way, hats off to the UI. It is slick. Okay, so we've got our template. Now let's go and create a workspace. We're gonna call this workspace. It's funny, they need us if you need a suggestion. Emerald Panther 54. I like that. I'm the owner. We're gonna go two cores. Uh, let's go five gigs. We don't need a lot of disk space and how much memory. Let's go. I like two to one memory to CPU. And let's go ahead and create workspace and let's hopefully watch this work. In fact, what we can do is notice it's already created in the background. And see, there we go. Now it's actually creating the pod on the same cluster. We'll give it another second or two. Do, 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 do. Pull on the image. So it uses a base image. In fact, we can go, let's go look at the template real quick while that's provisioning. We can go look at the template. We can look at the source code. We can actually look at what the image is being pulled. Where was it? Uh, yep, so a lot of parameters there. Kubernetes, coder. Okay, so it's defaulting to a coder image, right? You can specify Linux, AMD 64, Arch 64, and here's the startup script. So it's actually installing coder by hand. What's cool though, is you can actually go and have it do other things, display other things. Uh, metadata, here's, so the interesting thing, this coder is actually the interface for it. Let me see if there's an image field. Uh, find image. Yep, there we go. There's the image. There's the container. So in this case, it's using the enterprise base Ubuntu. So this is where it gets even more interesting. So if you were building your own base images, whether through Docker, Pack, or whatever, you can be very specific as to which images get pulled. So you can take this template, modify the image to something very specific to you, leave that startup script relatively simple, or you could take a base image like this and then add on all of those additional uh, components like Chasm VNC or in this case, uh, the coder, the VS Code agent, right? So let's go back to workspaces and now we have it running and there's my Emerald Panther. So this is really cool, right? So now, what I can do is I can go VS Code. It opens up a window, uh, trust, yes, I trust. And now I have VS Code running in Kubernetes with an isolated pod with PVC. And let's go ahead and choose your theme. Oh, I'll just mark it done. Okay. So let's try this. Let's just for giggles to prove to you. Let's do uh, let's do coder.txt. And this is super cool. And in fact, let's go here and let's go to terminal and create a new terminal. So you can see that I've got my coder.txt file right there. So let's save that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna stop the workspace. And what we'll see down here is it should actually, yep, see it's terminating the pod. Cool, but here's the good news, right? Let's break this, uh, our PVC. Notice we still have the PVC for it. So then if we go back and do, uh, we go ahead and do the pod. Notice the pod's gone, but the PVC is still there. And let's go ahead and look at it again. It's there, it says bound, but it's really unbound, right? Because the pod's gone. But if I hit start again, let me go ahead and pull that back up. And we can go back and then do get pod. And notice the pod is creating. So it's kind of starting new, which is great. It should attach to the PVC. We still have the same PVC, get pod. And let's pull up a terminal. So this is just straight up a terminal. And you can see there's my coder.txt. Now where this gets really kind of interesting is the idea of iPad, computer, Chromebook, Windows, Mac, doesn't matter. It's all browser based right now. It's all have the same authentication path uh, for connecting to it 
right? So whether if you want to add an OIDC SAML, all LDAP, all of those auth paths, where this gift can also get kind of interesting and is being able to, instead of going through the browser, go directly to it. So there is a CLI. Let me go ahead and do the CLI install page not found. Okay, I got to reach out to them. So let's go back here. Let's go to docs. And let's just search CLI coder CLI. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do their curl pipe bash on my Linux box. And then we're going to do the next step you have to do is basically log into the code server. So there we go coder login. So we'll do that coder login, we're going to give it the URL that we've been playing with, which is the sslip.io. And then it should give you a URL. The cool thing about this URL is you go to this URL and it'll give you an auth token, a secret token. It's and again, this is based on your authentication and just paste it in here and now you're done. So now close that out. I can go connect via SSH. Coder config SSH just to make sure. Look at that token. I didn't copy well. Thanks, Chrome. Coder config SSH. Are we sure? Yes. Cool. And it already knows. Notice that Emerald Panther. So now I can just SSH to it directly into the pod. So now I'm not even interacting from a browser standpoint of view. And because it's an exposed SSH, potentially I have the, the capability of copying files. Let's try it. I didn't try this. Let's copy it. Uh, actually, yeah. rsync. I don't know if rsync's there, but it'll be interesting. Let's try it. Uh, so there was a values YAML to, let's just copy it to coder. Ooh, that copied. Let's go here. And no, let's be specific. What was the home directory for this? I love playing home coder. Um, coder. Wah, wah. Okay. So that so the coder app provides. Whoa, it copied. Oh, there it is. <gasps> that worked. Okay, that's really cool. So that coder really is a full SSH uh, connection. That's pretty cool in terms of loading data in. And then obviously you you know you've got the development tools like Git and things like that that are there for connecting into external services. Uh, for me, right, taking a step I, a step back, I think it, this is a really interesting opportunity to play with, you know, a, a VDI solution that is very simple, very slick, gives you that opportunity to use iPads, Chromebooks, things like that in a very simple manner. And you saw in five, 10 minutes, it deployed very easily on Kubernetes. I uh, hope you found this interesting. I love having things like this in my toolbox. I will absolutely post these notes in a gist and I'll copy it in the show notes. And I also have a one-liner for RKE2 Longhorn and configuring that up to make it simple. Hope you found it interesting. Give me a subscribe if that's okay. And then feel free to comment on any other videos you'd like to see. Like I said, I got a little bit of free time right now and I'm looking forward to making some other videos about troubleshooting and security layers of you know full systems. And I'm always pretty quick about responding to suggestions for videos. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Bye.